And I was saying I had this really lovely patient and she was working concurrently with someone locally. And I kept saying to her, you need to know your fasting insulin number because her fasting blood sugar didn't look all that bad. She had a mm -hmm. CGM, she, her hemoglobin A1C didn't look all that bad. And I suspected she was leptin resistant just based on what she was sharing with me. And I said, I would be surprised if she's also not insulin resistant. And her fasting insulin was 20. And yep. I said, you're never going to lose weight. <laughs> and and you know what, Cynthia, adding, adding insult to injury intellectually is that to the average clinician, they could very well look at that number and say, oh, you know what, that's a good number. They have no, <laughs> so not only, not only are, uh, is, is conventional medicine overlooking insulin entirely, even the little bit of scrutiny that they are giving insulin is so wildly off base that you can find First of all, there's no consensus for what good insulin levels are, mm -hmm. like we have with glucose. We have such clear consensus cutoffs for glucose. This is good, this is bad, and this is terrible. That doesn't exist with insulin. It's a series of different entities, different groups who have their own metrics of insulin, and they're all way too high because they will look at the average American and they will say, what is the average American? And you don't appear to have obvious disease. And so your insulin is 15, so 15 must be be good. You don't appear to have obvious disease. And yet behind the scenes, they have hypertension to some degree. They have some kind of hyperlipidemia, whatever, but it doesn't reach the point of being overtly clinically relevant, perhaps. So it's even when they do measure insulin, very often someone, a patient would have 20 um, um, micrograms per mil and the average clinician would say, oh, you know, that's below 30. That's fine. And, and you and I are, th I'm thinking that's four times higher you know, yeah. well, not quite. That's a lot higher than what it should be. Double what, at least, at least what I would consider to be a good number. And, and it, it really does. Uh, that really is my central thesis that at the end of my career, professionally speaking, if I can look back and say, people look at health differently and, and, and they include insulin and appreciate insulin in a way they didn't before, average you know, clinical medicine, then I will retire um, with, with a, a great sense of satisfaction. But, but I am increasingly cynical um, mm -hmm. because conventional medicine, um, glucose is a druggable target. Mm -hmm. just like LDL. And so you can look at glucose and there's a whole, there's a whole cupboard of drugs that will lower glucose. Some of them, many of them act by increasing insulin. So that's an inconvenient truth. They don't want to acknowledge that by lowering the glucose because they're increasing the insulin, that they're making the patient fatter and sicker. They don't want to mm -hmm. acknowledge that glucose is a druggable target. And so it is much more clinically sexy. They want to look at glucose because insulin isn't a druggable target. And so that's an inconvenient clinical marker that can only really be moved by changing diet. And there's no money to be made by telling a patient to change diet. 